from seventh to winning LCK from the lowest seeded playoff team to one Nexus away <laughs> from mid-season invitational champions. The only trophy that SKT has not yet added to their trophy case. We've heard the analysts here talking about picks and bans. Yeah. Uh, GG Re game three, are you expecting the same thing? No, I well, what I think that they should do is work what use what worked here at MSI for CLG, and that was playing around Stixe. Coming into this matchup, the top two damage per minute players were Bang and Stixe. C uh, SKT, they're playing around Bang, and Bang is delivering. I think that CLG should return to their style where they draft around Stixe, they play around him. There's a reason that all these international players were saying Stixe was the best AD carry at this tournament. So, a uh, change here, Ezreal being banned, I think that's very smart because when you want to run these range supports without a lot of CC, Ezreal is very scary to play against because he can just jump around, play very aggressive, and Soraka can't do anything against him, so it's a smart ban. SKT leaving Ryze open and Maokai, basically telling CLG, we're going to trade. You get one, we get one. I love this. Prioritizing the Maokai first and giving over the possible Ryze here because Rise, we've seen many times. You can stuff him in team fights. If Maokai gets a root and there's a Soraka on the team, you layer that up with a silence, and Rise does nothing in that team fight. Hate to say it though, there are still a lot of good picks for SKT. At Trundle top lane as an option into Maokai is definitely there. Can also just play the puppy. The Rise pick forces Huhi on something different now because Echo is banned. This was the again the big question coming in. What is he going to play in the mid lane? Well, we're I'm gonna find out. Take a look at this. Kindred locked in for Smithy. It's one of his best performing champions, and not the Nidalee either. And CLG are doing what I was thinking. They're going to build a lot of protection around Stixe. They've got the Soraka Kindred that's so hard to take down the back line. Darshan is the frontline champion, the premier tank in the game right now. And obviously SKT, they know this. We need to be able to dive the back line. So Puppy comes in, teleports straight into her. Flash engages from a rise coming in as well. Either Caitlyn or Callista are the two picks we look at here for Stixe. Callista Soraka in itself is a bit of a weird combo. You don't really want to throw the Soraka <laughs> in, but it does add a bit of extra CC. That's another one. We saw it in the NA playoffs, of course. The Rage played Hurricane Tristana. Much talked about, luckily not often repeated uh, build just yet. 35 seconds before Council Logic Gaming round at their team composition, we've seen changes, we've seen tweaks. The uh, last lock in for SKT could most likely be that support. Are we expecting an army again or not likely now that the entire dynamic has changed, Kobe? I think it makes it pretty difficult, but again, that's why SKT are saving their support pick for last. We, we really emphasize the mid lane counter picks, but really what's been oh. so as CLG and North America Cassio have to find. It's meant to be a pull a faker. It's meant to be a counter pick. It is definitely in the laning phase. A great pick for the Cassiopeia, and there's the Caitlyn as well. Caitlyn Cassiopeia locked in and secured. It's the thing that was talked about coming into the tournament. But now we need to see whether or not who he can make it work in what could be the very last game that CLG play here. And one of the reasons why I was saying CLG should go for one of those center comps is because one of the things they listed in their interviews that they're so confident in, that they actually think they were better than SKT, was their team fighting. They need to prove it. So, a lot of changes for CLG. They have engaged now with some CC from the Maokai. You have ult from Cassiopeia. You have two carries in the late game where you both... You don't want to ignore one of them, but you will have to. I mean, you will be diving on one, get the Cassiopeia or get the Caitlyn, but the other one, other one will go crazy then. Still, SKT's team composition is also great in the late game. Yep. Ryze is there, Illusion being buffed up by Anami, getting slows on his auto attacks is something Bang will use a lot. But man, we're gonna get a very explosive game with a lot of team fighting. SKT looking to finish this out cleanly. CLG finally switch it up here for the last game. Once again, though, they least coming in for SKT because all they care about is getting river control. They want an early game jungler who can duel against the Kindred or gank a little bit better maybe against the Kindred when you combine the double CC with each other. Obviously, Kindred is a very strong ganger herself, yeah, I was gonna but she has a Cassiopeia who can't set it up as well as Rise. The thing is, there's a, there's a lot of volatility in this mid lane matchup. These are basically the mage machine gun champions, Rise and Cassiopeia. A lot of the reason why Cassiopeia is picked into Rise is not necessarily for hard countering him, but if you get the stun, small windows change the tide of that one versus one. And as you said, Kindred can answer Elise in the early game very well. 
We'll find out whether or not Smithy can handle that pressure from Blank and whether or not Counter Logic Gaming will bite back. The key in that one is to save your hail of arrows, your Q on Kindred to dodge the cocoon. You can't get hit by the cocoon. Well, let's find out how it handles. The trophy is one game away. The mid-season invitational title is so close to belonging to the LCK after so narrowly losing out last year in 2015 in Florida. Game three, CLG, their backs are against the wall. And now they have a chance to bite back. Uh, we've seen two lane swaps. Game two was a lot cleaner and a lot more advantageous for Counter Logic Gaming. Deficio, do you think this game is going to lean towards a lane swap or where are CLG looking? Well, the thing is, if CLG are looking at lane swaps and saying we are better than SKT at lane swapping, you can always opt into it just to get an early advantage as a team. Laning wise, it's very, very strong lanes about the bottom mid. And look here, early gank. Oh, a lot of damage. Exhaust comes out. Who he's in trouble. The bubble will help out. Three members of CLG come to support. Only Wolf's Exhaust was used. No additional summoner spells, so nothing major. And some deep vision here from Doshan. Yeah, SKT, SKT just trying to force a flash, but uh, who he knew. He had members on top side. Hovered up, and no chance of him actually dying, even though it looked pretty close. Another very early level gank in that mid lane. And it's definitely crucial that who he did hold on to his flash because, as I said, this is one of those mid lane matchups that can turn on a dime, especially if they end up in standard lanes and the junglers get that freedom. Looks like uh, COG are going to seek it out, though. Uh, and once they get some vision, which will be delayed, try and call the lane swap, I think. Yeah, not seeing anything just yet. Obviously, they know SKT haven't recalled and run to the top side, so they will expect them to be bottom side, and that's why. Yeah. So G is going top now and saying, you know what, we can actually outplay you in these swaps. Going for that blind swap. Send the duo up top side. Are we going to see, see a Soraka gank mid as well? Most OP gank ever. Does not have <laughs> Level uh, one stock goal. so... Boom! But Spell Thieves deals a decent amount of damage there. Aphromu also cashes in a little bit. It's a good early trade here. Meanwhile, Dashan is already topside. Only took one camp together with X Smithy. That's very early. Yeah, so COG, while they did draft a more standard team fight team comp, they're throwing in some wrinkles <laughs> here with the early I mean, moves. <laughs> Why not? Wolf can come up as well. We know he's got that bubble available to him. And not going to find a connection. Hey, here we go. 2v2 mid lane. It's about to be 3v2 as uh, the... Well, never mind. The junglers are not coming. And continue trading. Who he eats that bubble. Takes a little bit of damage, but forced away. And finally, it looks like the supports are going to default to their lane. Okay, so CLG once again on the outer turret ahead of SKT. Uh, but SKT will be catching Why is Duke up here in the top lane? He has nothing to do with this He got lane. in range for that melee minion experience. <laughs> that is why. That is it. Not saying it's correct. I'm just saying that's why. He's slowing down his team now when it comes to pushing his bot lane tower. He also wants to be down here and actually get the gold. You so rarely want to have to waste your teleport just to get a little bit of extra experience. A very greedy play by Duke in this lane swap. No teleport for him, but we'll be able to join on tower. Yeah, and they use the teleport on that melee minion, so it's gonna be a lot of, a big minion stack on that wave as well. I'll help out whoever catches it from CLG. Tower will be falling shortly, and we're gonna keep an eye on this mid lane. Faker, undefeated on Rise this tournament, 4-0. He's gone 19-2-24 across those games, and who he has picked the theoretical counter <laughs> has high chimes in at the reverse sweep. North America very, very well acquainted with reverse sweeps and high himself. The king. An expert. <laughs> but it's funny with uh, these mid lane matchups for CLG because they actually opted into skill matchups every game now for Huhi. SKT is setting up a little bit of a cheese gank here where you're expecting the enemy bot lane to walk by this ward you see down the bottom lane and then you surprise them. But, uh, I like that better. Surprise ganks. Surpri well, most ganks are surprises. <laughs> Hopefully. But the, unexpe the unexpected uh, camp here down in that brush. See now, how long they wait, because Darshan is Maokai, can throw a sapling. Yeah, again, so CLG didn't go for the standard rotation here when they take top tower and then go down bottom lane with your dual lane. So actually, they're not going to get anything for oh, now as SKT. This is Maybe. scary. Nope. Oh, puts the ward down. Darshan playing with his life. So this obviously means that Bang is alone top lane now. Gets a bit of solo experience, 6 A's here, and we get to even out, get standard lanes. 
instead, and SKT opted in for that gank, didn't gain anything. Yeah, because of that uh, commitment down bottom for SKT, Silji set up the freeze right in front of their turret. Sticks A tanks that so that the minion doesn't die, and Bang won't snag that CS. Oh, now Duke needs to be careful. He knows his wave is going to push towards CLG. Flash Out. is available. Darshan is looking for the gank. There's support coming for SKT. Defensive flash from Duke. And that will allow Darshan to get in range. But he's down a lot of CS and a full level from his opposite number. But he does have a wave pushing towards him now. He has the control and he also has the vision. That's why Blank is down here next to Duke. Blank is here because he needs to push it out. He has so, to help him or else Darshan could freeze. So basically, he's here just to push out the wave. Why not get a bit of gold from a pink ward as well? x is still around. Level 5 on his Kindred, but it's a big minion wave. Ooh, who he's roaming. Support from who he... Remember, no flash on Duke. Blank's running for his life. Who he's coming down. No teleport on the mid lane faker either. This is a long lane. They're going to get this chase. Duke doesn't have flash, remember. This could be so big for Counter Logic Gaming. Who he's flashed forward. Duke can't get away. He's exhausted. First blood picked up by Darshan's Maokai. And SKT didn't give up on that play. They actually had faker roaming down, so not punished quite as heavily as it possibly could have. And also the wave in the bottom lane didn't hit the tower yet. So that is still pushing very slowly in towards CLG, and Dashaun can now pick up all this farm, and Duke is going to find himself in a very, very bad spot. That's a very, very good point to bring up. Thank you, Be thank you, thank you. <laughs> because oftentimes when you go for those extensive you know, three-man committals to pulling off one of those long lane ganks, you lose out on a substantial amount of gold. But CLG right in front of the turret yep. where Darshan wants it. It is Christmas for Darshan. He's getting everything right now. Not Christmas for Smithy, though. I believe Blank got that scuttle crab and uh, the mark denied. Slow down some of that additional damage from Smithy. So lane swap advantages again being accrued by CLG. Six minutes in, first blood, and it was on the member of the team who had been starved the most. And he's going to continue to farm his way up. Two culls picked up again for Stixe and Bang, respectively. And I love to see junglers then stay around the bottom side when you know this wave is in such a bad spot for Duke because if he shows up to try and push it out, you just gank him again. He has put up two wards in the jungle to try and defend himself. But honestly, you can even lane gank him at this point. You just lock him down with the Maokai. Yeah, Kindred has so many options. And Smithy here is a, a one of those players that also likes to get the early Hunter's potions. So you have even more options. Kindred already has a ridiculous amount of sustain in the jungle. But going for the early Hunter potion as well is a lot about keeping up the mana and the options uh, wide open for you so you can react to what SKT tries to do. CLG putting value and getting a blue buff though over to Huhi for his own lane matchup. Instead of being on the bottom side to try and punish Duke even more, Got to get those bullets for the machine gun mages, Deficio. Blue buff is what they live on, and that will be a theme that we return to in this game. Oh. Do you still think Duke can be shut down even more? Wave is very slowly pushing towards his tower. Deshaun now realizing as well he doesn't have any vision in his own jungle, so actually doesn't belong to him because his own jungle is on top side, spotted. And that's why as a player, you always got to be ready to divide the map. Never think this is your jungle if none of your team members are around. And the choice is there. Clear for CLG as uh, Smithy is able to get the top side mark plus extend the farm lead over Elise. It is hard for Elise to keep up with the Kindred, but the Dragon started off here. Let's see what CLG's answer for that will be. 100% commitment down here. Blue buff on Rise. Those machine guns take down Dragons very quickly as well, so it's not going to cost Blink as much as you might think. And normally we could see a play here where you push in the top lane and you set up a TP and you just dive them 4v2. But Duke does have teleport himself and can join in. So it can be a risky play to pull off, especially because you obviously need a bit of time before the Maokai arrives. But I think it is still an option for CLG. At least use it to pressure SKT away from tower and get a bit of damage, who he's roaming as well. So this might signal a dive coming out. Look at the mini map. Teleport could be channeled. There's a ward in behind SKT. There it is. And it's being channeled. Here comes Darshan. SKT are in full retreat. Fake has managed to run up. Darshan cancels it and gets some of that cooldown back. Yeah, again, he just forced him off tower, but that means Duke can TP now. Oh, his counter logic gaming are in trouble. The 90 caliber net will put some distance away as the heals come out. Flash will knock up X Smithy into the air. Lambs Spite will buy some time. They turn the damage around onto Duke. There is Wolf Bite, and Duke's forced to flash away. 
Meanwhile, here comes Faker. He has been able to answer the roam from Huhi, and Faker does have Flash on right. So does Blank. Flash Cocoon onto Stixay. The follow-up from Bang is there. The bubble throws up Stixay into the air, and Stixay is killed. It's Bang that gets the secure. Huhi's going to look for the petrifying gaze. He's already channeled it. It was not enough. Huhi goes down. SKT have found two more. CLG had the first part down here. Okay, try and threaten the top lane, get them to back away from tower. We get some damage on it. The problem is as soon as you channel the teleport and cancel, your team needs to run because obviously the enemy top lane is going to be like, okay, well, I'm going to go top now and we have a 4v5. And those few seconds are crucial. You talked about SKT making a lot fewer mistakes than the other teams. That small mistake from CLG cost them very big. Let's see how much damage Darshan on the Maokai has been able to do down bottom during that time, though. Uh, about 60% on the tower. So this is now Duke joining in. Obviously, if you look at your minimap, you can see how everyone else from SKT is running towards topside and just Darshan is on the bottom lane. Chase is on. A slower chase than what we're used to because people don't really have boots yet if you're a faker, poor guy. And also Blank with a beautiful cocoon onto Stixe. It's one of those plays of CLG, if you go for that teleport play and you miss it, you mess it up, you have to be ready for the running for the hills, basically, because SKT with a big punish here. What a difference, because we were expecting Duke to be the weaker of the teleport users coming into the final. We saw a number of missteps and a number of mistimings on that ability. And throughout the course of the series, Duke has played the side lane very well punished CLG when they're there, and obviously punishing once again the cancel TP play. And one of the big problems about the play CLG tried to make was it was extremely predictable for SKT because we saw Xmithy abandon the bottom side despite being able to shut down Duke even more. So like, okay, he's top side. What are they setting up for you? We see him in our jungle. We see who he leave the mid lane. Like everything was moved towards that top tower, warp being placed behind. So they knew what was happening. That's why Faker already moved. That's why Blank was on his way. And they basically just waited for the reaction from CLG and said, okay, now you're TPing, we're here to defend, you have to cancel, and now we can punish you. So it's a small play by SKT, constantly following a CLG around, but just a little bit too predictable. And it gives SKT the gold lead, the kill lead, they've got themselves a dragon already. And of course, we'll be aware that Doshan will have his teleport available sooner. It actually is already available if CLG wanted to set up another proactive play. If CLG do go for one of those proactive plays, it can come from a Flash Cassiopeia ultimate. You want to hit the ultimate first and then flash after to cancel some of the animation and reduce the reaction time that your opponents do have. Got plenty of time to react now as we jump into the pause. Luckily for who he, hopefully for him, doesn't have to be the main engage when you have the Maokai. Send him in first. Obviously, we know the backline of CLG here is not going to move with them, a Caitlyn and a Soraka. And that's one of, again, the big things about a pick like Soraka is you don't really create many opportunities for your team to deal damage in fights because you can't CC anyone. You just stay back and you heal up guys and you try and kite back and, and make sure they don't get bursted down. And silence, if we count that as a CC, that could be crucial. Those, Lock them in place. Those can be, yeah, those can be game changing, especially if you ha land it on the rise. I'll we'll find out if Faker puts himself in a position to you know, get rooted in place, whether or not Aphromoo can force that. Uh, take a look at some of the differences already. Small CS advantage there for Darshan that has kind of snowballed and trickled from that cancel t uh, TP. And of course, who he's two roams or three roams that we've already seen this game is costing him some CS in that mid lane. Uh, not really looking to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Faker just yet, Kobe. Yeah, and he is going with early Negatron, trying to get to that Abyssal Scepter because it is you, very often you're going to get locked into those Mm. 1v1s where backing out is extremely costly. It's a difficult situation here for CLG because they've got no they've got no wiggle room when it comes to making mistakes. The moment SKT can get ahead, their team comp can continually force CLG to react. All that skirmish power from the Poppy, the Elise, the Rise, it is terrifying. CLG, the thing bonus for them though is that they have a pretty good reactive comp here. They're, they've drafted for more standard team fight. If yes. they can try and set up their lines, and prepare in advance for it. I think it's so fair it's to say that the team comp is also somewhat more forgiving. Maokai with his ulti, some Caitlyn traps to buy some zoning space if you're I mean, a little bit out of position. Overall, there was a lot of problems with the team comp. They ran in game one and game two. First of all, you couldn't win the split push war because there was a trundle. You also couldn't team fight properly because you had no ways of really helping your carries dive the back line because you had no CC from like 
your own back line here, so you just get dove straight on. Like the Soraka didn't offer anything in that composition, because when you run double teleport and you want to flank, you need something that can start the fight. Right. And then allow the guys to TP in, and obviously join in after, and Soraka can't do that. Well, it looks like we will be jumping back into the game. A quick client reset seems to resolve the problem for Stick State. And just to take stock of the situation, two to one in kills, even on towers, an extra dragon to SKT. And now that we also have a Nami back in the meta here, one of the reasons Nami was so good back in Season 3 was a lot of the mages being played was either pure assassins or it was these very low mobility mages. And when you don't have a bubble, a tidal wave, it's very, very easy for you to actually force these mages to constantly move around in fights, especially a Cassiopeia who want to sit there and just spam away. If you ulti towards her as a Nami, you force her to move and if she doesn't, she gets hit by it, she gets CC'd and she dies. So Wolf does have a bit more presence in fights, more than just being a healing machine like Aphromo is. And if he managed to land a good ulti, that can be a massive game changer. The Cassiopeia mechanics are definitely something to keep an eye on. The, the difference in the small movements between casting spells definitely makes a huge difference. Darshan, this entire time down here on the Maokai has been you know, having to fend off blank and having to continually throw out saplings through this Losing jungle. Losing his jungle. <laughs> yeah, rather than trying to build on that lead uh, and try and actually punish that one versus one. This is going to be a three versus one, though. So Sean sees it, though, and has backed away. Faker, two level advantage, plus 20 CS over who he is, opposite number. And it looks like Smithy's going to get challenged. Um, there is some support coming up, though. Wolf and Bang will find some contest as Sticks and Aframu come up. But challenge on the red buff, this could be an advantage for SKT. All right, no smites, it's just the last hits. Let's see who's going right, to take it. has got it, Smithy's got it. Four members picked up by Stixa, in fact, with the pult over Peacemaker. So no smites, there the was buff. a smite available. <laughs> he does have smite, but uh, Stixa is going to be able to get that with a... Good little uh, instead. juke around as well from Smithy. Out of the bubble, Faker now, might get ganked. Flash, petrifying gaze just for the slow, but it will force a reactive flash from Faker. So both mid laners, somewhat gankable. And again, uh, the way CLG is trying to play the map right now, it's once again very predictable. Uh, SKT has put up tons of defensive wards on top side because they know that's where they play the 2v2 with no tower behind them. So that's where they can get ganked. And then they just have Blank playing on bottom side together with Duke whenever the wave is pushed past the river. So they can always reset it into tower, bounce it back, and then they know, okay, now we have to be careful on top side. So they're playing very, very safe. And they're just trying, honestly, to get into a team fighting point together with CLG. Yeah, that's why I actually think that CLG are kind of happy with trying to take safe play at the moment. Kindred's going to outscale uh, the Elise. It's going to come down to really, really crucial cocoons from Blank if he wants to have a similar impact, which, to his credit, he did last game have a game-changing cocoon onto who he has multiple forms of CC that can come down from SKT when you look at the entire kit. Poppy, Elise, Nami. Ix Smithy, Cocoon connects, Blank finds him. What's well, a venomous bite down, Ix Smithy forced to just dance of arrows away, but that big burst of damage should ensure no contest on Dragon number two here for SKT. Wolf is still only level five though, so no ulti for him if he wanted to do anything, but just a nice little setup by SKT. Hover around Dragon, force CLD to move down to push him off, and then Blank is just hiding in the bush. Yeah, the advantages of brush control and setting up the vision beforehand there. Elise getting the full combo off and a giant chunk is definitely enough. Well, that small snowball starting to build momentum, starting to roll heavier in favor of SKT. They've, they've not um, flustered under the pressure that CLG's put on them. And in game three, they are the ones that have come out with the early game lead. And obviously while CLG will have a fantastic late game, we look at Maokai, you talked about the Kindred, we know Cassiopeia, Caitlyn, like fantastic scaling on almost everything, their mid game is going to be weak. You have the Cassiopeia still stacking up her passive, stacking up the tier. Caitlyn, obviously, in the mid game is not very strong compared to Lucian. So SKT have been fine saying, you know what, let's chill. 15, 16 minutes. But now, one to two items getting completed, we can be really aggressive and we can start making some plays where CLG will not be able to properly teamfight them. So we might get 10, 15 minutes where SKT will really look to control the map. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of jockeying for positioning and trying to set up. Right now, SKT setting up outside the outer turret here, and that one will fall. And just an easy play again. This is SKT understanding the power spikes of their comp. One item fully completed, Rod of Ages on Rise. You know what? We can start sieging up. We're not afraid of CLG ever engaging on us because we actually want to take that fight. 
And see if CLG pull the trigger. Hurricane and BF sort for Stick Save versus that Essence Reaver of Bang. Council Logic Gaming, they've got to play for time. Down two and a half thousand gold. It's wave clear time. Yeah. Wave clear and safety. It's pretty good on the side of CLG. But they've got to be very careful to be in the right lane at the right time. Short range there on both Kindred and Cassio and Darshan under pressure here from Faker. And CLG are going to have to put more effort into defensive vision. You can see here with the toggle fog of war, SKT are doing a good job of moving up the ward line slowly into CLG territory. And again, one of the adaptations for this tournament was teams came in and put more focus on dragons because a lot of teams were drafting these team fighting compositions who could scale up. And that's another advantage for SKT in this game. They got two early ones. So even if CLG wants to play that waiting game, Suddenly it's four dragons to zero, and then you're forced into fighting for number five. And that just gives another opening for SKT in how they can play out this game. Exactly. And that also means that SKT will have the setup advantage so that they can try and use again the Fog of War for the very beginning of it. Stick saying Afro, gonna go toe to toe here with Bang and Wolf. Trading relatively evenly. Good amount of sustain on both of these supports as Wolf is level six to Afro's level six. There's gonna be a challenge on CLG's blue buff. This is these ammunition for the spell casters, but who he's nowhere nearby. So even if CLG are forced to secure this, it won't go to the primary target. Who is gonna be able to arrive in time, but look at the rest of the mini map. There's a challenge. SKT are looking to come in. Afro who temporarily silences Faker, and Duke throws down the verdict. Afro's gonna go down. Wish will bite just a couple seconds, and Wolf has arrived at the tidal wave. Now X Smith is in trouble. Lambs just nice will buy time. Petrifying Gay stuns up multiple members of SKT. Everybody's on the respite. They get the heal, but it's Bang that finds the kills. The Arcane blank. Smash will buy some time, and Blank gets away. Great job by SKT pouncing on that because they see Stixe so far away, no AD carry for CLG, even though they're able to collapse here. SKT turn the screws. It's what we talked about, SKT, they want to fight. They really want you to start taking objectives where they can get a fight around it because they are so strong at this point. And the, and the better setup here. Uh, I mean, Elise is the one farther away, but immediately moving and Duke gets the delay knock up there basically, which allows the DPS members of SKT to have some alone time with Afro Moon. <laughs> and you can see the, on your minimap here, Stixer is still running from the bottom lane. No chance for him to join the fight. And this is what always happens when you lose every single lane and every single lane starts to get pushed down to your tier two towers, you will always react last. The other team will push in, they will eat first, they are the stronger ones, they will move first as well. And you just sit there, you get what you can, but then you also have to realize you can't fight anything, you can't contest anything but you're never going to be five. Well, CLG are 4,000 gold down in 20 minutes. And mentioned that snowball a few minutes ago. SKT are looking to apply more pressure, force CLG to react. And every time they do, SKT is the stronger team right now. Yeah, the snowball got quite a bit bigger off of that last blue buff contest, by the way. Not even one of the larger neutral objectives to go for. You mean with a minute till Dragon? That's a big one. And CLG nowhere near capable of contesting. Nope. SKT are starting to visualize their fingers around that trophy. It's getting closer and closer. CLG need to hold on and try and deny it. I gotta hold on real hard. Reverse sweep is what is required for North America and for CLG to truly surprise. But it starts with coming back from another deficit, another game where they cannot falter, cannot give up. And Dashaun, we've already heard from him one of the videos earlier talking about how you have to fight for every inch. And it's true for SKT as well. I like that a lot of these stories apply to both teams. SKT, they talked about their rough season, not giving up, fighting all the way up through the playoffs to defeat the Rocks Tigers. Then here in the round robin stage, also a very slow start for the team, but fighting themselves all the way up to grab that fourth spot, the last spot to get into the knockout stages and then running over RNG the first seeded team here at MSI in very convincing fashion. Yeah, no doubt at all. SKT have pushed a lot of vision into the CLG jungle in this bottom quadrant. Dragon is up, remember, but SKT are saying, we dare you to walk forward. Will CLG do it? smithy has got no flash, will dance over the wall and hasn't fallen for the bait. You're at this uh, point in the game where CLG, where you don't want to fight the dragon. But you also realize that you can't keep giving up all these free objectives because the next thing for SKT is you just move the vision you have on the bottom side 
to the top side, and you start doing exactly the same around Baron, and that's where CLG will have to fight. You cannot give over a free Baron to SKT because they will use it just to push every single lane down. Right now, CLG's first priority is defense. They need to regroup around their turrets uh, and huddle until there's an opening. They have to wait for SKT to back to Fountain to try and set up a pocket of vision. If you're this far behind as CLG, one of your only hopes is pulling off one of those small pockets of vision. If you concentrate your efforts in one area and go for one of those pink ward plays, that's the only aggressive play. Other than that, you have to hold the turrets. You have to farm out. CLG's comp, though, really only does well when teams are running at them. That's why so, a pocket of true side exactly. vision would be huge. Exactly, but in order to get that, as you just talked about, it requires SKT to back, probably fall asleep a little bit as well, and then suddenly <laughs> keep an opening. Map on, time on in the map, you know? Technically, that should never happen. So for SKT, as long as they don't overextend a blind face check at a poor time, they will get some of these fights where CLG has to run at them. And they can't really with that composition because they're the ones chasing the goal lead, they're the ones chasing SKT around the map. And then you get this face check onto a Baron, flanking happens, and it becomes very, very difficult. Who he is still down in CS, but keeping himself relevant. Abyssal Scepter completed, uh, sitting on 1,200 gold. Faker, on the other hand, two kills and assist already. QSS, get rid of that CC that can come down from multiple sources. And that is going to be a big problem for CLG. One of the great tools they had was to try and lock down Faker, maybe burst him out. This makes it exceptionally more difficult. Blue Ooh. buff challenge all over again. Fighting fight again. Looks like who he should be able nope. to pick this one up. Uh, SKT just a tad too slow. Yeah, big difference here uh, is that the four-man squad of CLG are together. Teleports would be available for both of those top laners as well. But in going for that blue buff, give up a decent amount of damage on this turret because the dragon stack in there is that burn. Just a couple of autos do a decent amount of work chipping away at it. Yep, and SKT is just waiting again for a few more minutes to pass by so they can start taking that Baron or at least threaten the Baron. Still, early on in the game, it's still risky for you to do. So get a bit of damage on towers. Do not waste your teleport if you are Duke. Just save it, match Tashon. That's all you have to do. We'll find out. How SKT continue the siege. Stick says finally arrived. He was shoving out that top wave, and that's what allowed SKT to continue to siege up. Duke, on the other hand, he's gonna get some hammers down onto that bottom inner turret. And SKT again playing the map very well, using Duke's strength um, yep. all series long, really, to keep Counter Logic Gaming on the back foot, reacting and playing defensively. And it's always just so key looking at who has first priority on pushing waves. Because that's the ones who can push it down first, then start roaming again. Oh, they're going for Smithy. Oh, Smithy's in trouble, and he's killed. Beautiful pick there from Blank. No hesitation from any of SKT, and that is going to put the pressure on CLG. The pockets of True Sight are in SKT's favor. One blue trinket's available for Stixay. He just uses it now on Baron. That will be killed, and SKT return to the bait. Oh, looking for the face uh -oh. check. Fake has found out from who and has taken him down. The tidal wave locks up who he. Petrifying gaze not going to be enough to matter. SKT have killed four members of CLG the and now they can go back. Snowball is huge right now. SKT just add five layers on top of it. Darshan will be run down here by Faker. Those overloads again and again and again. Darshan. Sap Magic Lifesteal simply not enough, and Ace and the Baron at 25 minutes. And that was the play. SKT right now is playing everything by the book. They're playing everything perfectly. They know they're much stronger in the mid game. Set up these picks around the Baron with your pick wards. Instantly, they just engage onto CLG. Nothing they can do at this point. Your jungle is already dead. Your support dies instantly. Afternoon now is trying to get some revenge on Faker. Just runs away. Unleashes the power. Still has flash and exhaust, by the way. So if anything else happens, got some additional tools. Yep, some very powerful additional <laughs> tools there, Quick Shot. Parent buff at 26 minutes here for SKT. They do go for the recall, though a lot of gold to spend here. And that is going to be the trifecta of AD carry items for Bang on Lucian right now. Plus, he's going to have the elixir on top of it. Very, very big push now for SKT with this Baron buff. It's a 10,000 gold lead, and Blank wants to extend it more. Already forces the flash away from Stix8. 90 caliber net buys some additional space, but that's just an easier target for the next team fight. SKT have continually gotten better with every single game, and Blank on this Elise has been phenomenal all series long.
Oh, Doshan's just going to get cut down. Blank is coming in from the side. There's some support from Huhi, but it won't matter. Vengeful Maelstrom and Sap Magic buy some time. Huhi's used the petrifying gaze. They've not got a kill. Ooh. Blank body blocks the shot, and Faker runs for his life. The poison's not going to be there. Trap Magic will not be enough. Smithy gets the Lamb's Respite. Buy some time with the Hex Trigger Shield as well. And Duke is tanking up everybody. Bang! There's a trap! He manages to get one before going down. Huhi is dead. stixay has got red buff, and if he can find some slows, maybe can get more damage. SKT with a small misstep. They overextend. Got Duke Stixay. looking for the stun. Stun Stixay against the wall. The silence onto Duke. Stixay 90 calibers away. Continues to chase. Duke's got himself one. Now Stixay's caught between three members of SKT. That's a double. That's a triple. Duke's looking for the quadra kill. And it will be secured by Faker. Counter Logic Gaming are aced at 28 minutes. CLG try and put their foot in the door to get back into this game. But SKT slam it shut. Faker making sure Duke doesn't get too many highlights here. Like, that last kill is his. <laughs> the quarter kill, no, 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 no. That's for Faker, not for Duke. Know your place on the team. It looked like it could have gone so well for CLG, but here's that replay one more time. Yeah, a little bit uh, over-aggressive by SKT. You see the rest of, of the members are still running down towards the bottom lane, so it's actually a good response by CLG, but still, you are so far behind that a puppy can just run around, don't care about the damage you deal, have enough damage to actually take you down. Another good setup, takes down Bang, but now he SKT is saying, guys, we have done this before. We are used to fighting with someone dying first and still turning it around. Wait for the bubble from Wolf. Straight on to Stixe, and you charge him into the wall, the fight is on. Yep, great setup right there, and then the convergence of all of SKT. Duke has his eyes on the back side, runs right past Stixe to grab the extra two kills and clean up CLG. And it looks like they're gonna clean up this game as well. They're knocking at the doors. CLG haven't let them in yet though. They're still holding they on. Got the traps. The trap wall. Wow, that trap wall is not gonna do a whole lot because Logic Gaming are down 13,000 gold. Trying to defend this tower using the hurricane to as much use as they can from Stixa. The tower's not gonna get pressured by SKT. Look at Faker's positioning on the side. If anyone steps too far forward, they are just gonna get insta gift by SK Telecom. Potentially just one last fight for CLG. They and need SKT to just overextend and punish them. Well, Tidal Wave will be used to secure this tower. No real contest, who he will have flash available in a few minutes time. That petrifying gaze has not been as important as it needed to be. Good damage from Stixay into Bang though. Yeah, the secondary turrets are not the ones to make your last stand on. It's much easier for SKT to circle around and close in on you at the secondaries. CLG are trying to hold inhibitor turrets. This is where SKT move for their push inside. It's gonna be the battle for Helm Steve all over again. Protect your base, don't let them in. Just keep Watch shooting, keep poking. Traps will give some damage to Stixay. Fake has unloaded the power. Who hey is pinned against the wall. Lamps are spiked just on the edge. Keeps him alive for a few more seconds. But Duke's the one that's going down. Doshan's buying time. Stixay shuts him down. That's one kill. This is where they fight. This is where they hold them. Blanks the target, but they found a kill. It's a rampage for Faker. He's forced away. Double kill for Stixay. It's a double kill for Faker. They've traded two for two, but crucially, the tower still stands. Yes, that one will count for CLG. They hold the line. Trading even on kills is okay for them at this point in the game. So SKT realizing they can't just run head first into the base of CLG. They will never give up. We have seen this multiple times. Dragon, number five, in a few minutes. Baron in a minute and 30 seconds. Now this is the fight, so CLG are just staying ready for back. Who he tries to engage will have the kindred ult to keep him alive, but he doesn't get a proper engage at first. Duke tanking off the tower, goes down as well. Keep in mind, CLG's comp is designed to kill you when you run at them, especially when you have a tower next to you. Again, another key cocoon from Blank in that one, locked up Aphromu, put a stop to the healing for CLG, and allowed SKT to go even in the kills there, at least for them. This time around, Huhi doesn't have the flash available for a surprise Cassiopeia play. Even though that one did fizzle out and fail in the last fight, it, it made Duke start tanking the turret early and right. put a lot of damage from the turret there from CLG onto the main tank of SKT. And you have your book here full of all different kinds of ways to win the game. 
running headfirst into enemy tower is now crossed out from SKT. <laughs> they go down to point number two. Is wait for five. That dragons. was on the list. That was the first one. <laughs> what now. kind of list are you running? I make my own <laughs> list, man. That's the list. I've seen Coma's list. That's the one. <laughs> Second part is wait for five dragons or Baron, and then do the same. Baron in 30 seconds. Dragon number five in around two minutes, two and a half minutes. And Counter Logic Gaming are in a 13,000 gold hole. If SKT make mistakes, CLG can bring this back, but it is reliant on punishing a mistake or pulling off a miraculous play. This is not a situation that you expect a team to come back from. Well, here comes the trigger finger because Baron's about to pop back up, and that is one thing that might pull CLG out of their defense. Smithy's going to be able to cue over the wall. Good oh, damage. Blank. Turn their attention to Blank. Blank has Rappel, remember, but he won't get it off. Stixay's got himself a kill. There's a teleport from Duke. He's going to get rooted. He landed on a trap. That was well played by Stixay. The hammer comes down, and CLG, they've bought themselves more time. It's not over yet, boys. Faker's going in. Faker gets Darshan. The Aqua Prison locks him down. Duke has a Guardian Angel. X Smithy jumps forward. 5v4. They turn their attention to Duke. But remember, he comes back. Look, at, Look at Bang. Lamtra Spy will continue to buy time. Jumping onto Lamtra Spy. Duke's in trouble. Who's going to be the first to die once in time? Faker's shut down. He's killed. Who he picks it up after he was the target. But they've lost Afro. They've lost X Smithy. Who he and Sticks they have to do life, though. Sticks they's looking for more. GA pop by Duke channels the shot. Ace in the hole won't pick up the kill. But the net, the 90 caliber, who he goes down. Duke's going massive. Four, the two, and, oh nine, and Wolf saves SKT's life. Wolf. It's a three for one turnaround. They're pushing down the mid lane now. Bang and Wolf together. Sticks is coming with Dashaun. Let's see if they can lock them down. Darshan's looking for the target. Darshan's taking a whole lot of damage. Aqua Prison on cooldown and not a lot of mana. But look at the minions in both top and bottom lane. That's going to be CLG trying to clear off the minions, but SKT probably go for this Baron. And that is going to be their next sieging tool. Man, Wolf there, allowing for the escape. Really, really crucial execution Wolf there. Wolf saved everything. So this Nami pick is coming up huge. Because now you can get the Baron. There's even 25 seconds on Dragon, so it's not like CLG can try and trade it or anything with just Stixay. You get Baron buff, you can make a push, you can then return, take Dragon number five, make another push. The fights are getting closer and closer. The entire venue held their breath during the course of this team fight. Let's take a look at it one more time. The four versus five from SKT here. They have the Guardian Angel on the poppy, which ends up being crucial. This right here, Duke makes so many plays. Gets the wall stun onto Huhi, and that also takes down the Cassio B ultimate. Lambs with Spike is a big part in getting CLG to this point, even in the team fight. Oh, we oh have my to god, jump another back one! To live. Darshan, vengeful Maelstrom on the front line. He's going to go down shortly. The passive buys some time. So Rock is healing him. Darshan is still alive. Darshan finally goes down. What more can SKT take? Stixay puts the damage onto Blank. Tries to sidestep a predicted cocoon, but it wasn't fired. This is Dragon number five. That's why CLG are out on the map fighting this. Baron buffed up SKT are looking to force this soon-to-be Dragon 5 buffed up SKT. Yeah, there's no tank alive for CLG, so they have to just back away. This is gonna be a fight in their base. Once Dashaun is back alive, 25 I don't seconds know if they for him. Even, yeah, I don't know if they... Well, Blank went back to base, so... 15,000 gold down, a Baron down, Aspect of the Dragon down. CLG could not have picked a harder way to play what might be the final game here at the MSI 2016 in Shanghai. Oh, the damage is insane now oh. as well with the Dragons. Mid lane being pushed in by Duke. Faker's coming on the bottom side. CLG almost just have to try an ulti engage from Hui and take down one guy. And they have to go now. SKT are closing in from all sides. Their eyes on the prize. The trophy here at MSI standing in the middle of the arena. Turrets going down. Have opened up the base. Counter Logic Gaming. One minute to fend off this Baron and then they still have to survive 
the remainder of the aspect time. Darshan's trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Duke. The rest of SKT on the mid inhibitor, chunking it down. Bang, dashes forward. Look at the damage onto X Smithy. He's forced away. He's going to get chunked out by that volatile spidling. A cocoon onto Darshan allows him to get chunked. The first inhibitor falls. The second, nearly immediately after. And SKT, they're looking at the Nexus. Fake has gone up to the top lane as X Smithy once again is burst down. CLG have to heal up and try to re-engage. Yeah, SKT just staying around knowing Super Minions are on their way. Last tower goes down. CLG only have the Nexus turrets. Darshan's in trouble. He decides to engage on Wolf. Infill Maelstrom buys some time. Lamb's respite will keep CLG alive for a few more seconds. But this feels like the final fight. Petrifying Gaze didn't lock anyone up. But the hammer did. Duke throws CLG into the air. He picks his hands up as SKT have got four members down. They turn their attention to the Nexus. And SK Telecom continue to rule the world. And they are your mid-season invitational champions. Jubilation for Korea's SKT. I love to see how happy Blank just got there. It's been a tough tournament for him. A lot of people criticized his performance. As we said, SKT had their ups and downs. And that right there makes it all worth it. SK Telecom hoist the trophy. They were unable to pick up last year. You can see Pumandu behind the team. Legendary support as well back from season three. There has never been a more dominant team. Two world championships, five LCK titles, an MSI added to the list. They've checked all the boxes. They truly have. We're going to head over to the Analyst Desk to break down that final game in the series. Thank you very much, gentlemen. SKT celebrates as the confetti falls around the trophy that they have fought so hard for. The one thing that they didn't have in their trophy case, they can now yeah. lay claim to. I mean, Faker was very eager there as yeah. well. Just jumps up, holds the trophy up. I. He's like, I'm the captain, boys. I'm going to let that trophy yeah. on my own. But. They're sharing it now, though, and I just can't say enough about how impressive it is that SKT has sustained this dominance. Oftentimes, we overlook that fact. And to think that last year, heartbreak in five games versus a Chinese lineup in EDG to come into Shanghai and be able to take out North America CLG. All right, as Rendon moves on to the stage, we brought Winston Zhang to the analyst desk to help us with some translations through the winner's interview, as well as the presentation of the medals. So congratulations, SKD, for winning the MSI Championship at Shanghai. Give SKD a round of applause. Now we'll have Riot Games. Riot Bradmore and the Riot Magus. These are the directors of esports at Riot Games, Riot Magus and Bradmore, moving to the stage to help with the presentation of the medals. Yeah, we're finally be able to see how SKT has, has got us so good in the first day, but on the second day and third day, they didn't do so well, but they finally managed to come back and finally be able to get a championship at MSI. Finally be able to beat NALCS today in the final day. And they're going to crown the trophy. This honor be belongs to every single player and belongs to the entire team. Blank. Thank you, Duke. Blank. Thank you, Faker. Blank. Thank you, Blank. Wolf. Thank you, Wolf. Blank. And Ben. And their manager, Cod and Coma, coach. They performed so well, one after another. They have finally be able to win every championship and every tournament. World Championship, IEM, MSI. This is the very last championship that I've yet to get, but today they finally got it.
This honor also belongs to LCK. Now, let's take a picture along with our guest, NSKT. And congratulations to MSI World Championship, SKT. A much deserved picture at that. Blank getting startled <laughs> by the confetti cannons. I don't blame him. I just love Blank here. He's happy after the win. The, the sheer amount of emotion on his face after getting a trophy, I just think that is like that is the, the thing you watch for. Just how happy he is with it makes everything worth it. Now we have Faker and Blank. We're going to get a quick onstage interview. So first off, Faker. Faker. Demon King Baker. Now you finally won the MSI championship. The very last championship that game. What do you have to talk to the fans at the stadium? Oh, yeah. 그동안 좀 한국 팬들이나 세계 모든 팬들이 응원을 많이 해줬기에 저희가 우승할 수 있었다고 생각하고요. 그리고 어, 현장에 와주신 중국 팬분들한테도 정말로 감사드립니다. 네, CC. Faker is saying he didn't know he can make this far and he cannot do this without everyone's support here that motivate them to keep them moving forward and to finally get the victory. So thank you so much for everyone, for the Chinese fans who are here today at the stadium. So after getting every single champion, we're very curious what's next step for you. <笑>그러면 he said, his goal is that what's past, what's past is past, but there are going to be more championships, more tournaments, and he wants to take them all. Well, the other player, Jungle, Blank also played phenomenal in this tournament, and we're going to give him a quick interview. So after Join SKT. Blank has won IEM Championship and MSI Championship with, along with SKT. What do you have to say? Uh, Thank, thank you very much for everyone who support him when he didn't play so well and to continue supporting him. Everyone, the fans, the coaches, or the other players who has been supported him. And thanks everyone to have him on his side along with him. Now, now after the interview, which is called, once again, congratulations, SKT. We give them another round of applause. After MSI. So MSI has finally come to the end. But coming up next is going to be Season 6 World Championship in the United States. And we'll definitely bring you on more exciting games. And also LPL is about to start. Well, once again, a much deserved victory there by SKT, the reigning world champions and now the MSI champions to boot. Once again, Wentz, I'd like to thank you 
for help with the translations there. And we're going to hold you on the desk at okay. least for a little bit longer to maybe get some insight from you as well. But, gentlemen, let's, again, let's break down this run here by SKT through the group stages where they had a bit of a stumble, the reformation, and then the, the ultimate victory over CLG in the finals here. Yeah. I think that this uh, tournament, when you when you have a look at historically how much this team has accomplished, but they've also had some huge ups and downs. And I think that the start of this year, it looked like maybe they were going to be slumping one more time, but they've come back through from uh, through adversity. They've made the roster changes that they needed to do. And it, you know what? Like ultimate validation here of a lineup because a 3-0 North America CLG, who was also an impressive team at this tournament. Yeah, CLG stepped up and their motto was win everything. But it's SKT who has actually won everything at this point. Well, LCK, wasn't their motto MSI, like fear not and championship. Goal? They well, also said win everything at the end of like every interview. Their their goal, yeah, their goal coming into yeah. the season was to win everything. Their motto coming into the tournament, respect all, fear none. Yeah, and the way SKT just systematically takes each team apart, they're like the Borg. They just always adapt to any situation and will continually get stronger and stronger. Who's going to beat them at this point? Because I, this was the year for them to go down. They switched out two players, the season changed again, and they win yet again. Yeah, that's the big question that we have left to answer. Crepo, any thoughts on that one? I mean, just uh, the biggest slump since their 2014 season where things didn't go that well, and mm -hmm. it was looking very rough. Uh, it all looked like Rox Tigers would be here, honestly. And, that's and very they, true. They probably are. <laughs> also, the answer to Jazz's question, <laughs> who's going to beat them? Probably the Rox Tigers, if anybody. Uh, maybe China can keep progressing because we can't uh, also... We have to mention, rather, just the, the progression that China has made in, in these tournaments. RNG definitely showed up. Yeah, sadly, they played the semifinal instead of the final, but that could have been a, definitely a worthy final as well. Yeah, now, before, I'm sorry to cut you off there real quick, Spawn, but before we head down to an interview for ourselves, I want to come to Winston and ask you what it's been like to experience this event here in Shanghai, China, since you've been very actively involved in communications with all the players from all the teams. What's been your take on this event so far? Well, this event has been amazing. And one thing I have to point out is that how excited the matches are especially in group stage. Right. Every team can beat every other team. So it was really exciting for the fans, the local fans here, to be able to come out and join the excitement from eSports. I, I think everybody likes it. We have a really well set up stages. No shortage of exciting yes. games through the group stages themselves. Gentlemen, let's talk about those. And so, like, a, you know, in terms of the way that the entire... Uh, journey of this tournament was is that we had these expectations set that you know that's so no but you know and it's not and it's not to we take us, it SKT one yeah that's true Ooh, you got it. one Best right and, in the world. you know i don't you know it's not to call it out and make fun of it it's to say that that was popular opinion was yeah. there were so many ideas of how this tournament would result and it's great to see an in international competition so many things turned on their head barring the eventual SKT win, which is like, okay, when, yeah, exactly. When's that going to end? Yeah. Two things, yeah. Three things are certain in life, death taxes and SKT winning the <laughs> tournament. But the rest is like left to be decided. All right. Well, of course, as I throw that question to you, we are now ready for our interview. So it's time now to toss it down to Shox, who's standing by with a member of CLG. Thank you very much, Dash. And uh, first up, of course, thank you to Afrimu for talking to us here. I know it might not be easy um, after, of course, not getting your hands on the championship, but with what feeling do you walk away from uh, your games here today? Uh, playing against SKT definitely was pretty amazing, I would say. Uh, I'm not that sad uh, coming out with the 0-3 uh, loss. I thought we played pretty well, but our execution just wasn't really there. And uh, we know what we have to work on coming in the next split. And uh, SKT is just a really damn good team. Come Obviously, on. they are a damn good team. And you guys have put down a, a perfect or a very good performance up to here. How much of that will that give you a boost to go now into the next split of the LCS? Because you started with some rookies, a new team, and a project. But now there's going to be so much more expectation on your shoulders. Uh, yeah. Coming into the uh, international tournament, we definitely learned a lot. And being able to play against all the teams and making it all the way to finals, we have uh, a lot of knowledge that we can uh, use for our play. And going into NALCS, I think that uh, NA as a region will probably do a lot better at Worlds this time around. Uh, definitely really confident in saying that. And what's up? OK, you talked about uh, having learned a lot. Range support meta, is it a tournament <laughs> meta thing or is it a real thing? Uh, it's actually a real thing. Uh, the supports in the series that we had just played, uh, he countered me every time I picked Soraka. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty damn good pick, I would say. I knew he was probably going to pull out Nami or Sona or something like that. But uh, supports right now, it's really good not to shy away from uh, all of the 
pool of supports since they all bring uh, a lot to the table. So Nami that game, Wolf was going off every single game. Uh, he had sustain versus Soraka and then he had an engage with his wave. So he played it really, really well and uh, props in. Why didn't you want to steal it away? Oh, why didn't I want to steal it away? Uh, didn't happen. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. Next time, uh, finally, obviously a great journey here for CLG so far in this season, second place at MSI and actually defeating the odds and doing a lot of things that nobody had seen you doing this season. What, what feeling do you walk away from this and what do you want to tell your fans that stuck by you? Uh, pretty good, I guess, getting second. Not really, I went first, but uh, thank you to everyone who supported us. Uh, we appreciate it immensely, especially to our foreign fans, not just uh, NA, even though we're representing our region. And uh, thanks a lot for everything. And I want to give a special thank you to uh, Team Liquid's challenger team, Team Liquid Academy, for uh, scrimming us before coming to this event. We didn't really have any scrims. and. Uh, those guys definitely stepped up to uh, help us practice in coming into MSI. Well, awesome for uh, giving you the props to that team as well. Congratulations, Afro, on a fantastic tournament overall, a fantastic showing for NA and for CLG, and thank you for talking to us. Thanks. There we go, Afro. Always happy, although a bit disappointed not getting the title, but still happy with their overall performance. Guys, take it away. Thank you very much, Shox. Aframu leading the charge there, the leader of that team uh, for all intents and purposes. And, and I think we have to reiterate the fact that CLG should be proud coming away from this tournament with the second, with the second place finish. Although, yes, it's, you, know, you didn't snag the number one. Everybody should hey, be gunning could be for worse. the win. You, know, you could have issues finding scrims and then maybe just not scrim at all and then have a worse tournament. So I'm really happy with what CLG brought to the table here. Yeah, what I think is really interesting as well is like this isn't the first time we've seen a somewhat competitive series between a North American and a Korean team. Like, if we think back to the 2014 World Championship, both Clown and TSM had 3-1 series. So, mm -hmm. like, the actual score of this series was worse than then. So I don't want to go ahead and say, like, man, what massive growth, the gap is closing. Like, I'm not going to go and make those statements. But what I will say for CLG is that they played a great tournament based on their expectations. This is the best North America has done in reference to every team that's not the Korean teams. And they did also take a game off of SKT in the group stage, so a lot to take back home and still be very proud of. Yeah, and with the current state of the roster, I mean, like two first-year players coming into this tournament, Sticks are completely unproven on an international stage, relatively unknown, and they come out and get some very well-respected uh, Jews, I guess, by the end of the series. And, you know, one thing that I think they will take away from this that maybe RNG won't is that their mental fortitude against SKT never wavered. They fought until the very, very end, and to be able to uh, hold your head pr uh, high and and say that with pride is something that North America will definitely take away from this. Yeah, yeah I was going to, I'm sorry, I was going to return to that point about the mental fortitude being a huge thing for mm -hmm. CLG. Do have to push us ahead, though, as both teams did give it their all on the rift today. We, though, have to see, as we have before, that Faker carried harder than the rest. He's going to be awarded our player of the series, bringing his 33% of the team's damage and 18 kills in three games. He gets that honors as is much deserved. Yeah, and I mean, there's a lot of things to be said about Wolf's support pool and bang on AD carry and Duke with the split pushers, but like this team is so focused around Faker. The way their dual lane can play passive because they expect Faker to carry almost every game. He destroyed these games even when he was getting incredibly focused. So hats off to Faker for staying dominant. And if anyone wants to see what SKT looks like when Faker's slumping, go watch the group stages again because he was not having a great tournament. So credit to the young man one more time for turning it around and proving that he is the best player in the world. I already said a poke got enough times he starts poking you back and Faker was throwing haymakers this whole series long. A poke from God is much more powerful than yeah. a normal poke as well. It's usually a solo kill of some kind. <laughs> it's usually the equivalent of supports getting poked by mid laners and then just yeah. dying. But yeah, I think, I think SKT played very well as a team and it's really hard sometimes to get the clear MVP. I think Faker did stand out. But yeah, props to Wolves too. Fantastic Nami play, some really nice bubbles. Uh, for me, It'll be a tie between him and even Duke, certain like high impact moments, but over the entirety of the series, everything together, what they mean for the team, how they impact each other, Faker still is a well-deserved MVP. Absolutely a team effort. Shox is joined though in the interview lounge by the man himself. So let's head downstairs rather for a word. Thank you so much, Dash, and congratulations, Faker, of course, once again. Um, I know you talked about it just a few seconds ago on stage, but I do want to ask you again how it feels after last year not being able to get that victory to now be the person holding the trophy and having all the confetti here at MSI. 그 페이컨스 그 작년에 이제 MSI에서 준우승을 맛봤지만 이제 올해는 이제 우승을 하면서 그 모든 이제 그 축하와 이제 그러한 우승컵 들고 그렇게 우승하게 되었는데요. 소감 좀 말씀해 주세요. 어 우선 그 
그 같은 이름들의 대회를 여러 번 우승하긴 했, 아니, 다 우승하긴 했지만 어, 다음에 열리는 대회들은 또 다른 대회들이기 때문에 어, 다시 새로운 마, 마음으로 다시 우승을 우승에 도전하는 그런 대회라서 다음 대회들도 열심히 할 생각이에요. Uh, I won several championships that, that like LCK World Championship and so on. But each tournament is a new tournament, and we'll keep trying to win those tournaments continuously. Yeah. Well. Talking about the tournaments that are still coming, you have won everything there is to win, but there's something very special possibly coming up at the end of the year. We're going back to North America for the World Championship and the Staples Center, where it all began for you guys, and you got your first title. How special would that be if you guys were able to show up there and possibly get your third World Championship title, where it all began? 그 이제 올해 롤드컵 결승전은 이제 페이커 선수랑 SKT 팀이 처음으로 국제 대회 데뷔한 시즌 3 롤드컵인 LA. 세... LA 스테이플 센터에서 다시 열리는데 결승전이 거기에 다시 한번 진출하게 된다면 얼마나 특별하게 페이커 선수에게 얼마나 특별한 의미가 있을지 말씀해 주세요. 스테이플 센터에서 저희가 처음 우승했을 때 그때가 저는 가장 기뻤다고 생각하고 어 그래서 그때 그 경기장을 가, 올라가면 은 새로운 느낌일 것 같고 또어 많이 기대돼요. Uh, I'm really looking forward to go to the Staples Center one, once more. When we won back at season three, that was one of my happiest moments, actually the best moment as my professional career. So I think it's going to feel really different and new when I, if I get one more chance to go to that Staples Center. Definitely this. will. Uh, and it is in your hands. Our analyst awarded you with player of the series. So it was a very hard decision. Who would you give it to if uh, you were given the decision? 그 방금 이제 저희 분석가 데스크에서 페이커 선수가 이번 결승전에 이제 최고 선수로 손꼽혔는데 페이커 선수가 이제 정한다면 어느 선수에게 이번 결승전 최고의 선수의 영예를 줄줄수 줄 있을까요? 어 저도 잘하긴 했지만 어 저는 솔직히 저랑 뱅이랑 울프랑 다 정말 잘한 것 같다고 생각하고 나머지 듀크 형이나 성구도 정말로 잘 해줬는데 어그 중에서도 저는 바텀 디오가 좀 잘했다고 생각해요. So I agree that I played very well, <laughs> and also like Bang, Wolf, like, like Duke and Blank. But if I had to pick, I would want to thank the bottom duo, Bang and Wolf, for this series. Yeah, they had an amazing series. Just two more questions. First off, I want to get your opinion on your um, enemy in the series, CLG, who was actually a team that was reformed and has rookies in their squad only since the beginning of the split. How far do you see them going? How do you see them evolving? 그 이러, 그럼 이제 이번에는 그러면 결승전에서 맞붙은 CLG 팀에 대해서 묻고 싶은데요. CLG 팀이 올해 이제 신인 선수 두 명을 새로 영입하면서, 그러니까 스택스 선수랑 후이 선수를 새로 영입하면서 나름 새로이 꾸린 팀이 투입인데 이제 붙어 보니까 이제 CLG 팀에 앞으로 어떻게 성장할 것 같고 얼마나 더 이제 좀 잘해질 것 같나요? 어 오늘 CJ 아 CLG랑 상대 보면서 느낀 점은 그 CLG가 정말로 운영을 잘한다는 느낌이 들었고요. 어. 그렇지만 저희가 좀 한타 그 이기는 싸움을 잘 봐서 이겼다고 생각하는데 CLG에서는 그 부분을 보완만 하면은 좀어 지금보다도 더 좋은 팀이 될수 있다고 생각해요. So I think CLG has really good team management like late game like that game management but I think we're able to win because we're like able to start like initiate the fights when we had a like upper hand. So I think if CLG just um kind of improves in that area they'll be a better team. Okay, we'll see uh, how they do later on in the season. Is there anything you would like to say to our viewers who have been following you for three and a half years now and seen you taking this title in the end as well? 그럼 페이컨스 이제 마지막으로 이제 무려 거의 이제 3년 반이나 시간 동안 페이컨스를 응원하고 이제 지지해 준 팬들에게 한 마디 말씀해 주세요. 어 정말로 지금까지 계속 저를 응원해 주셔서 정말로 감사드리고 또 저, 저에 대한 비판이 좀 어, 가끔 많을 때가 있는데 저는 그 사실인 비판들은 다 수용하기 때문에 음, 앞으로도 좀 많이 비판해 주시고 또 어, 앞으로도 많이 지켜봐 주셨으면 좋겠습니다. So I want to thank all the fans who have been cheering for me for all throughout this all time. And there are actually a lot I have seen some criticism against me on the internet community, but I'm willing to take those that are based on facts. So um, I'm also welcome those Chris in the future, and 
Yeah, just keep cheering for me, please. Yeah, um, bit of an answer there to the critics as well. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Faker and SKT taking home MSI. And uh, a little bit of a failed comment there in that last answer, but overall very happy to lift that trophy. Take it away, guys.